Hi, it's Pyam here from Niche Advice. Right, let's talk about buying properties and converting them into HMOs. How does that work? What's the process, not from a builder's perspective, but from a financing perspective? Can you buy a normal property and can you then get a HMO mortgage on it? So let's talk about it. Hi, it's Pyam here from Niche Advice. Right, as more and more people look to get more, frankly, out of their property investments, um, they've started looking at, you know, HMO properties because, you know, uh, it's been, it's well documented that you can generate quite a lot of income from it, but obviously you need to have the expertise with it as well and you need to have the knowledge and the time or be working with a very, very good management company, in my opinion. Um, but one of the biggest issues around HMOs is actually financing HMO deals, okay? Um, and there are a number of ways clients have traditionally financed HMO properties. The first way is obviously, let's just assume you're buying a HMO which has got a standard, you know, it's already got a license on there. Well then there's plenty of lenders out there. As long as you meet the, um, the product uh, suitability and the lender suitability, which generally most lenders want experience. So they want one or two years experience of being a landlord. But not all, some of them can lend to first time landlords, okay? So that part of it is doable now, where, you know, if you, talk, if you ask me the same question, I'll probably have done videos on it last year, year and a half ago, it would have been a lot less options out there. So there's a few lenders out there that will deal with first time landlords. You still have to be a homeowner, but you can be a first time landlord. So that's that. Um, but let's assume you're gonna buy a property and let's just say it's a three bed property. You're gonna buy it, but at the moment it doesn't have a license, okay? So then it comes down to a couple of questions really. First question is, does it need a license? So you need to check with the local authority uh, and see what you're going to be using the property for, you know, number of bedrooms, number of floors it's got and so forth. Does it actually need a license? Does the local authority or for what you're going to use it for, maybe a student let, how many people you're going to have in there, do they need a license? So that's the starting point. So once you've identified the property, you start doing your research, that's one of the things you should do. Once you know where you stand, yes, I need a license, no, I didn't, don't need a license, but it needs to be up to standards, obviously. You then decide what to do with it. But from a lender's perspective, the key driving point is, look, um, if it needs a license, we're going to need to know, you know, we'll give you, you know, you've applied for the license or you're going to apply for the license and then you have to confirm uh, that the application is going through. So can you get a mortgage uh, for a HMO that's going to be converted? Yes. Traditionally, that wasn't the case. Traditionally, what you had to do is go and get, get bridging finance and then do it. It really depends on the level of work I think the property needs. Okay. So if you're going to buy the property and it needs a lot of work doing it, you're going to convert it from a three bed to a five bed or a six bed, then obviously you're going to need the valuation to come in as, as a six bed, a five bed. So th in those sort of cases, people take bridging finance, uh, the bridging lender will lend, you tell them what you're going to do to the property and obviously you do the work and then we'll refinance that out. And then once we're refinancing it, the valuation would have jumped because you've done all this work to it. I mean, you may have bought the property for 200. You're now going to probably do it for 300 because you've spent 50, 60, 70, whatever it is you've spent on it. And that's on the basis you're going to do it as a HMO. Obviously, the rental is going to be higher and, and that's how it works. So you bridge it, do the work, apply for all your licenses, get everything sorted out and then you get out. But some properties don't need a lot of work to it. You're not going to be adding bedrooms to it. You're not going to be doing a lot of things. So for those cases, you can do, you know, a straight remortgage, okay? As long as you obviously give the lender the various reassurances, there are various rules, there are various things that we have to let the lender know, um, which we can give you guidance on. So um, really, that those are the two steps. Um, what I will say about HMO, guys, um, don't be fooled by all the sort of the hype that you you see sometimes on the internet about HMOs. You know, they can be hard work. There could be problems. You know, you're going to have rental voids. And if you haven't scaled up your portfolio, if you're just running your first one, you've got to be prepared for those things. And that's one of the biggest things. You know, 
It's okay if you're running multiple properties and you can afford rental voids and so forth. You can afford tenants that are not going to pay you. You can afford people that are going to sit in the property and not move, you know, but you've got to take everything into account. You know, that happens, okay? If you've got other properties you can fall back on, fine. If you haven't, don't max everything out. One of the biggest problems I've got with my job is almost holding clients back and going, look, you know, I often get clients and, look, I want the least amount of deposit, I want the the best rate possible. I want the you know I want the you know highest loan to value. I want the, you know I don't I don't want a lender that doesn't accept you know this this this. I want the loosest and the best criteria out there, and you can't have it all. And what I would say is you've got to give yourself some some wiggle room. Okay, don't just max everything out. Okay, the worst the worst type of people at the moment that I deal with is the ones that cannot control themselves in terms of. I just want to borrow more. I just want to do this. I want to do that. And that makes sense if you can back things up when things go wrong. Um, anyway, guys, um, that's a little bit of information around HMOs. We're doing a lot more HMOs, I have to say. Um, I am doing a lot more where it's done by the bridge because simply, um, you know, properties are taking longer to, to do. So, um, and, and builders are taking longer than expected. So, uh, and what I would say on, on that front is we're doing a lot more 12 months bridges rather than six months bridges. So be careful because uh, often a lot of people, a lot of the brokers or the lenders, they may try to push you down a six month rule, um, six month bridge. And you may think, oh, I'm going to be in and out in six months. Guys, if the exit is sale or refinance, that could take a couple of months. That's gone. You can have a sale fall through. That's, that screws things up. And often a lot of lenders have got penalties if you go over your terms. So, you know, one of the things you can do is try to sort of, um, alleviate some of that risk by taking longer term um, financing just in case things go wrong because they can do now longer term financing obviously you're borrowing it over a long term longer period you may have to pay more um, so you know you've got to take things into account you know it's not just do this it's individually have to be looked at but um, I am seeing more and more uh, you know, people that approach us where their their existing bridging term is running out because they got messed around with, you know, whether it was a lender or a refinancing uh, exit or whether it was a sale that's fallen through. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.